today we are starting a whew, today we are starting with Christmas at Emmanuel. Uh, we are done with the I am statements. I love the I am statements, but I was ready for Christmas. Now. I'm like, I'm sorry, Pastor Mark. I know what these sermon series are supposed to be, but I got to get to Christmas. That's just how I am. Let's just go for it. Christmas at Emmanuel. It starts today uh, as we look at Luke chapter 2, verse 8 through 14. As we go ahead and look at that and dive in today, how many of you are ready to get in God's Word? Man, y'all are quiet today. Woo! Lord Jesus. Here we go. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news. Say that with me. Good news that will cause great joy. Great joy. Come on. For all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. The title of my message today is Joy is Your Job. Joy is your job. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you, God, for today. And Lord, you brought the chosen people that need to be here today at this particular time. And Lord, I pray you would bless them for coming today. Oh, God, I, I bind any spirit, anything that would try to get us distracted today, try to keep people home. Lord, I come today, Lord, ready to preach your word. I come today, Lord, trying to light somebody's fire up to let them know that even in a time in the middle of darkness, in a time of chaos, Lord, there is a joy that you give us, a joy that comes from within, Lord, that we can have this holiday season. We thank you and we praise your mighty name in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen, amen. Hey, I love Christmas. In case you have not already noticed, I love Christmas. Uh, I grew up, everybody in my family loved Christmas, and then I met my husband, and I thought I loved Christmas, but I'm going to tell you something, my man likes some Christmas. He loves to decorate for Christmas outside, and when the kids were little, I mean, he would get really into it, and the kids would get into it with him. I mean, they would, they would take a piece of paper out and design the layout outside of how the blow-ups were, what they're going to look like. And they're like, this year is going to be the year. Every year, we would add more and more and more. In fact, we would get in some arguments in my house when I figured out how much we were spending at Big Lots on blow-ups. I mean, everywhere I turned, there was blow-ups, blow-ups. I mean, this place looked immaculate this particular year. And there was an arch that was a candy cane arch that you had to drive under to get to our house. And people from the neighborhood would come to look at it. It was so cool. We had lit up reindeers in the yard. I mean, I couldn't even walk through my front lawn because there was lit up presents and everything all everywhere, 20 blow-ups, lights on the roof. It was crazy, y'all. But I got to admit, it looked great. It got me in the Christmas spirit. In fact, I went to the dining room table on this particular night, and I said, you know what? I'm going to get a hot cup of coffee. I had my Christmas PJs on and my Christmas robe, and I was sitting there working on my sermon, and I had the perfect setup because as I was sitting there, I could look out the window, and I could see all the beautiful blow-ups and then the lights outside, and I'm typing up my sermon, and I'm just a-going, I'm drinking coffee, and I'm singing Christmas carols and all as well. And in the corner of my eye, I see about five guys running in my yard. Well, it scared me half to death. I jumped up. I flew open the door with my PJs on, and I looked out, and they were taking blow-ups out of the yard, stealing them, literally picking blow-ups up, extension cords, everything. And they were everywhere, and they were pulling things up out of the ground, and they were running out of the yard. Well, I stood at the doorway. I was like, stop it. Put it down. And they just looked at me, and they would take more stuff, and they were running down the road. So you know what this crazy preacher woman did? I didn't go in the house and shut the door. Those were my blow-ups, and those blow-ups were my life. What are you talking about? This family had worked hard to put this out to make it the best Christmas ever. So I, because Michael was at work, I decided I was going to rule the roost that night. I took off running down my neighborhood chasing after these guys. And I kept saying, put it back, put it back. And the more I would laugh, the more they would run. 
mine, and they would laugh even harder. And then I realized that they had a car, which was not good. And they threw all the stuff in the car, and they squealed away. And about that time, I said, "Uh uh-uh, it ain't going down like this. It ain't going down like this. So I, you know what I did? I went ran, ran back to my house. Door was still wide open. Kids didn't know what was going on. I got in my car, put that bad boy in reverse. I sped out of that driveway. I said, it's on. It's on. So I started going down the neighborhood. I'm like, I'm getting these blow-ups. I mean, I nothing upset me more than someone taking some part of Christmas from me. I was like, I hope I get these bad boys. Oh, you just wait. You just wait. They think I'm just a crazy woman in PJs at Christmas. Man, I will tell you what. I will give them. I will tell them what's up. I don't care. I'm going to get up in their face, point my finger, get three snaps in the circle. I'm going to tell them they do not come in my street, in my yard, take my blow-ups. I was so mad. I'm flying down the highway, right? I'm coming past Main Street, and I'm like, dear God, I hope nobody sees this crazy preacher lady chasing these people. I mean, yelling. So I was like, Ace Ventura, y'all. I was yelling out the window, had my head set, like, stop, stop, stop. And as I'm riding, the phone rings. It's my husband. Hey, honey, I'm on my way from Mark. What's going on? I'm like, I'll tell you what's going on. Someone stole our blow up, said, what? I says, he said, well, get home and call the police. I said, no, I'm not. I ain't calling the police. I'm going to go get them. He said, Dana, how many are there? I said, five. He said, what are you going to do when you get them? I said, okay. Click. Hung up on him. I said, you know what? I said, this might not be a great idea after a while. I mean, there's five of them bad boys who are big, and there's one of me in my PJ. I didn't even have my shoes on or nothing, y'all. I mean, I'm like, this is not a, a pretty pretty picture. And about that time, I started thinking like this. And I'm a pastor. This probably doesn't look good to the community. I mean, I know they think I'm crazy anyway, and I'm chasing them down the street with blow-ups sticking out of their car. Like, this is not good. And so I decided to listen to my husband, and I went home, and I called the police. I'm calling the Fremont police. I'm like, yes, um, what's your emergency? Um, yes, uh... Um, someone has come and stolen blow-ups out of our yard. Uh, do what? Yes, blow-ups out. Okay, we'll be right there. So they come on the front door. They ring the doorbell, and I said, it's, it was the worst thing. I said, these five guys came, and they took our blow-ups. They went there. What do you mean they took our I said, you know, he said, listen to me, like, you got plenty of blow-ups here. I said, oh, no, we, we want them kind of people, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we don't have one. We got, we're like, oh, like Christmas vacation? I said, you don't like the movie Christmas I mean, we got, we like Clark. I mean, we got, we got blow-ups everywhere. And they said, no problem, we'll take care of it. So they left. And the funny part is, throughout the night, they kept coming and ringing the doorbell saying, yes, we found part of your reindeer down the street where they had thrown it out. And then a couple hours later, doorbell rang, oh, here's another part of your blow-up that we found. And all throughout the night, we, we were so, we were cracking up because I wanted more than anything to catch them bad boys. I was hoping for something that, that would only last for a little while. I believe that many of us were hoping For something in a season that's only a season. We're hoping that there's something in a season that's only a season. Christmas is nice. The presents are nice. The lights are nice. The poinsettias are nice. Everything is nice. But I'm going to tell you something. It's just the season. And what God has to give us, the joy that he has for us, the peace that he brings to us, is something that can last in the good times. Is something that can last in the bad times. It's the kind of joy that only he can bring. And so many people, I believe, are looking for it in the wrong places. God has promised us peace to all men. The peace and the joy that he brings is it can be found, but many of us are looking in the wrong place to see there is a difference between joy and happiness. Happiness is external and joy is internal. Happiness is based on your circumstances and joy is something that you know. And many of us right now have made happiness our goal. Oh, if I could just do that, it'll just make me so happy. If I could just date so-and-so, oh, he makes me so happy. If I could just have that job, that's oh, it's just going to make me so happy. And we place happiness up here that this is our goal, that we just want this. And if we could just do this, it could make us happy. I tell you what, this gingerbread man over here is looking pretty happy. 
I mean, think about it. I was like, right? Walking around, he's got this on the hand like this, right? And I'm thinking that many of you today, including me at point of times, uh, we have this gingerbread man <laughs> syndrome, right? When their kids are heavy, <laughs> when work's good, when that job that we prayed for for so long is going so good and we feel so happy walking around, and, and, I, and when our bills are being paid, we're, praise God, glory be to God, we come into church like this, and all is well, and everything's great, and everything's good because we feel happy. But what happens when our spouse doesn't make us happy anymore? Come on, somebody, when they don't take the trash out. Come on. What happens when that job that you prayed for so much that you thought, if I could just get that job, it'll make me so happy. What happens when you get the job and the boss doesn't treat you very good or it doesn't go the way that you wanted it to go? What happens when the people that you thought would make you happy no longer make you happy? I'll tell you what happens. Many of us, you know what we do? We quit. We quit. We give up because happiness is not the way that we want it to be. And that's what many of us look like right now. We've quit. We've quit because we're not happy anymore. But what you got to know is happiness is not your goal. It should not be your goal. Joy should be your goal. You see, joy is something that comes from inside. I want to know today, do you have joy? I'm not asking, do you have any problems? Come on, somebody, help me preach. I didn't say, did you have any problems? I'm saying, do you have the kind of joy that you need? Do you have the joy? Do you have the joy? See, I want you to know that I don't have joy when I have money in the bank account. I don't have joy just because I have a good job. I don't have joy because I have the right job. But what I do have joy from is that I have the right kind of job, and the, I'm sorry, the right kind of God who has me in the palm of my hand, that no matter what I'm going through, he will be there for me. That's the kind of person that I'm looking for. I'm looking to serve him. I'm looking to go through the motions with him, to live with him, to walk with him. I have the joy because I am in his hands. So how do we maintain this kind of joy from the inside? Number one, you can have joy on the inside despite what happens on the outside. Joy is not just a, um, an emotion. It's an attitude that we determine. When God is on our side, we can have joy even in the driest season of our life. You can have joy in the middle of your storm. You can have joy when you're broke. You can have joy in the middle of a bad doctor's report. I'm talking about not the kind of joy that is present right now, but the kind of joy that is in your future, knowing that God has everything under control, knowing that God is the God that's in charge of your present and also your future of everything that you're going through right now. That kind of joy. God is working things out in your life, and his favor rests upon you. He is with you. So in Luke chapter 2, verse 10, we see that the angel appeared to the shepherd, and he says, I will bring good news and great joy to all people, not just some people. That should bring us joy today to know that God just didn't come just for those to think they have it all together. Um, God came for, for those um, people who think, oh, God could never do anything for me. God could never bless me. God doesn't care about, hey, he came to the shepherds, y'all. He's saying, I'll bring the great news and joy to all. That means every man, every woman, right? Every person is represented. That's the kind of joy that God brings. He came to bring it to you today. When I think about the shepherds, I mean, shepherds back then, they were kind of considered the low of the lowest, right? They, they were considered like the low-class citizen, these shepherds. They, they stunk. They were weird. I mean, they were hanging out with animals. And God goes and talks to them. How many of you know that God always approaches the unexpected people? Some of you have some unexpected issues going on right now. I want you to know, don't you think that God can't come in and show up in the middle of your situation? Because he will. Those are the kinds of people he looks for, and he's looking around right now saying, I will show up in the middle of your mess. And the angel said, go, 
and you will find Jesus. You will find him lying in a manger. Think about it, a manger. <laughs> All right, in, in, a, in a barn, in, in, a, in a manger, y'all, y'all getting it, that you will go find him lying there. He wasn't in no Hyatt, right? He wasn't in a suite with a nice view with a big old hot tub in the middle of the room. He, he wasn't there. He was in a manger, right? That's where the joy was found in the middle of the manger. I want you to know today, even in the middle of the darkest circumstances of your life, you can still have joy. Come on. When you don't have money, you can still have joy. When your family doesn't call you anymore, you can still have joy. God has the kind of joy that is not only found in the good places, but it also reaches you in the bad places, the places in your life where you need it the most. That's what God has, that kind of joy in your life right now. I tell you what, that brings me joy to know that God brings joy to every circumstance I face in my life. And he shows up in the manger. That's where you'll find joy. Thank God for Psalms 30 verse 5 says, Weeping may last for the night, honey, but joy comes in the morning. He will show up, and he will turn your attitude around. It amazes me how many people call themselves believers and Christians, but walk around with no joy at all. I don't think people understand and recognize the kind of joy that God has given us. Just because you have a bad day does not mean that you can't have joy. In fact, people are looking at it more now than ever. They're wondering, What's wrong with that person? Why are they so, you know, why do they have so much joy right now with everything going on? Because it's the joy that only he can give us that's from the inside that he will give us right now. And it's our job, your job, to maintain that joy. Really, it's all how you look at things, isn't it? It's your perspective on things. When they're taking place, how, how is your joy coming through? And the enemy wants you to question God. He wants to keep you from moving forward in the middle of bad circumstances. He wants you to question God. He wants you to have a pity party. And many of us fall into this trap, and we say, well, why, God? I just don't understand why this is happening to me. I want you to know this. It's not happening to you. It's happening for you. Maybe instead of asking God, why am I going through this, God? Why is this person sick? God, why is this happening right now? Maybe we need to start asking, okay, God, um, instead of why, Lord, I need to know how, Lord. How are you going to work through this why, God? How are you? Because we can get so stuck in the whys, can't we? And I feel like we miss out on so much that God has for us because we don't understand. We want to know why. Well, why this? It's like when my kids were little, I told them to do it. Well, why? Why do I have to do that? Well, why? Well, why? Well, why? Well, why? Many of you are walking in your, in your life right now with Christ, and you're like, but why, God? But why? Instead of saying, Lord, I believe that in the middle of this mess, like I don't understand why this is happening, but God, how can you mold me? God, how can you change me? God, how can you set me up to help somebody else? God, what are you trying to teach me in the middle of this? And if we're not careful, we can lose our joy because we're all about the whys. You know, people uh, like to know all the details. Some people do, right? All the details. You know, oh, well, but why? Well, why? What did they say? And why? And you're trying to tell a story. It's like, look, can you just be quiet and let me tell the story? Right? You don't know, have to know all the whys. And you're in, right now in your life, in this season, don't miss out on the greatest joy, especially at Christmas, because you're so caught up in the whys. Why do I have to wear a mask? Why did I lose my job? Why can't I go see my family this Christmas? Why can't I do this? And it's just not the same. And no, it's not the same. But you know what? I have a God that always remains the same. And it's all our perspective. It's all how we do it. I mean, I was riding down the road the other day, and the enemy started playing in my mind. He said, well, you know, you got a child that's a senior. You know, do you know he's missing out on his whole senior year? Oh, you know you don't have any band concerts to go to this year? Do you know that it's just not going to feel like her? Do you, do you know that your church isn't, you know, like it used to be? You know, I had someone this week that I was with, and, well, you know, when all this is over, are you just going to stay at one service? No. We're going to stay at two. Well, I just don't understand. Well, why would we go backwards? We're going to go forward. In your walk with God, if you're not careful, 
you'll stay backwards asking the whys. And God's saying, stop asking the whys. Trust me and ask how, God, can you use this experience? How can, that's why I prayed over Trevor earlier with his grandfather. And I said, I pray that this, in the middle of this probably very sad moment and very upsetting moment, Trevor, I believe that God's going to use that to bring people in your family closer to God. I believe that something good is going to happen to me. And it would have been easy for me to say, say, oh, Trevor, I just don't understand why this is happening to you right now. Of all times, it's Christmas. I just, you've been so good. You've been a great youth pastor. I just don't. No, instead I said, hey, start asking God, God, how can you do something in the middle of this? It's all on your perspective about what kind of joy you have. Don't get caught up and stuck in the wise. That's where the enemy so easily wants us to be right now, is looking at why is this happening. But instead, one of the ways that we cannot lose our joy and it can help our perception is being grateful for the things that he has done. And I feel like so many times, especially this time of year, we're quick to forget what he has done. We get stuck on the wise and somehow forget what he has done. You know, what, what he has done, what, what he's going to do. And I'll tell you what helps with that is to simply sit down every day, maybe before you go to bed, and write three things down that you're grateful for for that day. Doesn't even have to be for the whole month, don't have to be for the whole year, just that day. Three things that you're grateful for. And I'm tell you what, you sit there and you meditate upon that and you start writing down little things. I mean, you'd be amazed all the things you had to be grateful for. You called up in the why, why somebody did this to you, why somebody did that, you don't understand this. Why don't you just simply praise him for what he has done? Because the same God that did it then is going to pull you through and do something else again. You got to be grateful for things. And when you do that, joy will flood your heart. And the last thing today, number three is don't let what you can't control control you. Don't let what you can't control control you. You have the power to control what's going on in your life and your spirit. If you let bitterness in, guess what? Bitterness is not going to make you better, is it? Bitterness is going to hold you back, but it's up to you. You have the power to control that. And when you get rid of those kinds of things that can somehow creep in your life, that's when you're able to experience the true joy that you need this Christmas. James chapter 1, verse 2 through 4. I wanted to close it. Pete, you can come up. You guys can come up. Um, it says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kind. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Can you take it back to the first, the second verse landed right there? Consider it pure joy. Do you have joy today? I remember that song, I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Down in my heart, I got the joy. Why, why do we sing? I got the joy down in my heart. I wonder today, do you have the joy? Do you have the joy when trials come? Do you have the joy when death comes? Do you have those kinds of things in your life? Hey, we can count it all joy. You said, well, why? Why can't we count it joy when terrible things happen, when trials come? Because it's not only a testing of our faith, but perseverance is developed in the middle of it today. You can have joy in the lowest moment, in the darkest moment of your life. Joy can still reign in your heart. Happiness, remember, is external. It's it's, uh, based on your circumstances, the things around you. But joy comes from within. Today, this Christmas, regardless of how different it may be, regardless of how uh, frustrating it may be because of what's going on around me, I will still continue to have joy. That is one thing I will have. And I wonder, how's your perception? Are you grateful for things he has done? Hey, remember, yes, we have a lot of things going on around us. And yes, things might not look the same. But I just praise God that he's paid my bills all during the pandemic. I praise God that he has blessed me all in the middle. Of, hey, I feed, even feed all my kids in the middle of the pandemic. Eat me out of the house. Why? Because it's God. It's the joy that he brings down to me in the darkest moments. Where do we find joy? We find it with him. I don't know where you're searching for your joy, but if we're not careful, we can miss it. 
we can look in the wrong places this Christmas. I pray you have joy regardless of the things that you're going through this morning. Will you stand with me this morning? Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those that are here today, God. Lord, I pray for those who have made happiness a goal, those who who constantly look at things saying, if I can just do this, I'll be happy. Lord, we know that sometimes those things are great, right? They last just for a little bit of time, but Lord, after a while, that happiness is going to leave because, Lord, there's only one who can fulfill. Lord, and I don't want to be hooked up to an external source, God. I, I want to be hooked up for one that works internally, God. I want to be hooked up to you, the one that can change my life, the one that can bring joy in the darkest moments. This Christmas, Lord, I believe people are going through dark times and dark trials. But God, I pray that the joy of the Lord would be their strength. God, I pray that the joy and the peace that you bring deep within, Lord, would flow out of them in the worst kinds of experiences around them, God, that they still can have that joy today. Lord, I pray for every person who is down, every person is discouraged this Christmas, God. And I pray, Lord, that you would bring them the joy that they have in their heart that would overflow to other people around them. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen, amen this morning. Hey, I hope you have a 